yeah yeah all right let's hop into this uh first up we got the microsoft conference and i want to say real quick uh i will be clipping these individually for youtube so um stay tuned for that also on my channel yo tizzler um but yeah microsoft uh let's start with some halo infinite why not um all right so what do you have to say about this because all i'll say is i'm glad to see master chief um i like the last halo game but i i miss mm. master chief um so like you i also i i didn't necessarily like the story of the last halo game there was a lot of re- repetitiveness like the, yeah. the the one boss you fight through the entire game gets old super fast um <laughs> but aside from that multiplayer was awesome like i've actually been um talking with some of my other friends like I'm really trying not to buy another Xbox One just for Halo because it's like I miss playing Halo that much, Halo multiplayer that much, um, and the Master Chief Collection I never really got around to. So Halo Infinite is something that could definitely get me to play Xbox. Like that's one of the few things that could really get me to play Xbox again. Um, so it, I'm really hyped, but I'm also also like interested in it because like this Infinite is what's getting me. Because it's like, are they trying to make this, I know it's the end of this trilogy, but are they trying to make this, like, the last, like, Halo game? Like, is this going to be a platform where they just keep building on top of it? They just keep adding, adding to the DLC? I was going to say, you mean, you mean the Xbox Game Pass isn't what's going to get you back to, on Xbox? No, Xbox Game Pass is not. <laughs> First game of all, s- no subscription fee is going to get me back to a console. <laughs> <laughs> even if halo Infinite but you is can on get there. all the games day one i mean when i when i get my xbox i'm sure they'll probably give me like a free trial of game pass that you i'll can enjoy get for halo while. infinite day one <laughs> until my three month free trial runs out <laughs> <laughs> but no nah, I, I just my big thing is i really wish they would have shown gameplay um obviously we have a whole another year and a whole another e3 before this game actually comes out it's supposed to be a launch game for the next gen xbox which is pretty cool because apparently that hasn't happened since like i think the first halo on the original xbox or something like that um so that's pretty big um not quite sure where the story has gone i'm a little blurry on uh what happened in halo 5 even i know master chief was like on the run um but it'll be interesting i'm gonna i'm gonna keep my eye on this one for sure um but did you have anything else to say about halo before i because there's no. something that ties into this that they showed along with it. No. Nope. Um, so they actually showed uh, Project Scarlet. Well, they didn't show it, I should say, but they talked about Project Scarlet. Um, which they is showed a, a title card. Yeah, which isn't even the and name of the console. And they said those words. <laughs> yeah. And they essentially just reiterated what we already know. Uh, the craziest specs you've ever seen in a console ever this- in, in life. Did this feel like Scorpio again to you? This felt, I mean, this just yeah, felt like absolutely. when we got Scorpio. Yeah, absolutely. So at this point, it's just a con, like these consoles aren't different or new really in any way. They're just, they're essentially just PCs that you play with a controller. So they're just going to have upgraded specs. Um, but what I'm most excited to see is how this actually translates to the first party games that they are, make are and optimize for. Are you excited about how? Like, cause that they talked about Project Scarlet in relation to X Cloud. So, what do you think about X Cloud? So, X Cloud, I feel pretty much the same as I do with Stadia. Um, <laughs> I, I do no, I do, th- I do think this is the future, probably the same way. Uh, when Netflix started streaming, people thought it was crazy, but now, like, that's the only way people watch. Not the only way, but that's the main way people watch like TV is streaming. So, mm-hmm. um, and it works perfectly fine. So I do think we're gonna get to that point with games as well. Um, and I'm sure it's not gonna be for everybody. Like there will probably be people who still want to keep their hardware and and disc and whatnot. Um, but X Cloud, I I mean it has potential. Just but I how mean, well like, it works. I'm yeah, I'm like just looking the idea of like playing using your phone is just screen or a tablet as a screen is I really what's appealing like that. to me. Yeah, yeah, I really as long as the latency is is like acceptable, which I don't know, I would have to try. I'm I really want to try Stadia when it's free, uh, when it comes yeah. out for free. I was for saying that. they were they were running Stadia tests on like 35. Yeah. What did it, we say? What were those speeds you said? It was like crazy low. 35 for 4K, 20 for 1080 and 10 for 720, which is 
that's that's insane like everybody has 10 uh yeah. 10 megabits per second internet speeds um so yeah. yeah playstation i don't know if you know does they have an app right now where you can uh stream games to your phone but it's it's kind of really bad because it's like <laughs> you, you're not quite streaming from a data center you're streaming like your your console has to connect to a, a wi-fi network which then your phone connects to a wi-fi network and then they have to go through the the wi-fi to talk which is is not really that good um but so it's basically like a wi-fi version of the ps tv that i had exactly um yeah but yeah, I'm I'm interested to see what Sony's answer to all this stuff is going to be because they seem to be a little behind. Yeah. Well, I'm not impressed with them because they make me use three apps at a time Actually, to use all of their stuff. Yeah. So but we'll anyway, see. my uh, so I don't know what you're next, but my next is Dying Light Two. Yeah, we can go into that next. Um, I'm super hype about Dying Light Two. I played Dying Light One w- way too much. Um, <laughs> it was just such a fun way to like parkouring was just a fun way to traverse. A, I really love the look of the parkour. World. Tell me why. Yeah. Why does the parkour look better? And tell me if it is better than uh mirrors edge i don't it, really know how to answer that uh, maybe it's an engine thing um is it better than mirror's edge though like do you feel that way too i don't i wouldn't say it's better or worse i just feel like it's whatever your aesthetic if you don't mind a more artistic aesthetic then mirror's okay. edge is mirror's edge handles smoothly okay but they both um, handle pretty pretty smoothly pretty yeah but i guess the world in mirror's edge doesn't look real because no, everything's yeah. just so white um, right but dying light the world actually looks like a place okay um so and yeah like being able like just knowing like it, i think it was just the freedom of just like you're running and then you see a ledge and then you can climb that ledge mm-hmm. like you know you can climb that ledge and it, it doesn't it pretty have to much, highlight it for you like to know this is the only thing you can climb right and it's like paths like once you have that freedom and once you get used to running around paths just kind of open up before you and it's like you know you're pretty much in a place it's not like dead rising levels of like seas of zombies but like Mm -hmm. it's pretty it's pretty can be pretty crowded at times but navigating um as far as like being the verticality of being able to jump over and vault like i know i know towards the end of the last game that i had the ability to to like vault over a zombie mm-hmm. um as an upgrade in the skill tree and that was very helpful because there's be points where you would just use a zombie to vault over a fence oh that's pretty cool um, and so they just didn't become a it, it became like they just became obstacles in the world instead of being like a deadly threat right because of that traversal yeah and then you have like um dying with dying light you have like the central hub um of your world that you kind of report back to and do your missions from okay uh do you know or do you think uh two is going to be like that as well like do we know exactly Um, what they're changing it sounds like they're going to build upon that um so just for some back ground uh the first dying light game was made by the same people who made dead island i'm mm-hmm. also a fan i played both dead island games i love those um and uh in this game one of the story differences is, is uh so in the last game daylight was important that's when i ran most of my missions because nighttime be- was like a whole nother entity mm-hmm. um but daylight in this game you're not gonna uh daylight in this game has something to do with triggering your infection so they're saying that you're not going to want to spend a whole lot of time out in daylight in this game so that's gonna be interesting um if Mm. they force force you into the night because the night night, the zombies are crazy right they get active yeah and there's there's lights like there'll be lights around your encampment but like you have a flashlight but like if that flashlight goes out like it's (laughs) really hard to see especially (laughs) with it being in first person right crank that Um, brightness up (laughs) <laughs> and yet you'll still have like the large open world environment are we gonna um, get battle royale back in this game because they that, added that in dlc and in one that i'm not sure i wouldn't see why they wouldn't um mm-hmm. i didn't hear any complaints about it uh they're just harping that this this game is really has an emphasis on your actions and your choices in the game that sounds um, cool so they're saying that uh that your choices have the ability to change the the outcome of the world mm-hmm. very sandboxy so, yeah but i guess because last time it was like you made choices but they didn't really affect anything it was just it was just kind of how characters in the story like treated you mm-hmm. 
Um, so it's like if you didn't want to, if you denied a mission for somebody or something, they might just not talk to you the rest of the game or something like that. But it didn't really oh, wow. af- affect the overall outcome of the game. Oh, okay, so yeah, I can so, see them dialing that up a little bit in this one. Probably. Yeah, that'll be a change for this one. Awesome, awesome. State of Decay two. Do we have a release date or release window for that? Uh, I'm sorry. This is Dying Light two. They're or, just sorry, saying quarter. That's yeah. okay. They're just saying quarter two next year. So probably okay. sometime between March and June 2020 cool sounds good i'll definitely keep an eye on that one um yeah. my next my next uh announcement that i'm hyped about is elden ring um so we didn't actually get anything uh more from this than a cg trailer but this is the game that was rumored from uh george r, r. martin george r r martin consulting with from software who um you may know are the creators of dark souls one of my favorite franchises of all time so the the trailer i will say evokes that from software design aesthetic and the 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 from software like uh it looks like just from the trailer that it's probably gonna be a hard game which i'm i'm all down for uh i just it's so cryptic like i I really have no idea what what this is about at all um but i do like the aesthetic my big hope with the game is that it's a lot more they put the story more in the forefront than they did with souls because souls it was just kind of like you read items and you kind of observe the environment and from that it's like a a puzzle that you piece together like with your own your own brain and whatnot to to kind of get a a big picture of what what's actually going on in this world but hopefully with this game they actually tell um i kind of want them to tell me a story to see see how well they could do that i would be curious about that um but no release date on this yet uh coming to ps4 xbox one pc so i'll definitely be getting that on ps4 um because i was gonna say what would be the mechanism because i know uh correct me if i'm wrong but in uh from soft types of games uh the i the way that you get kind of story and lore is to like read things in the the environment it's all item descriptions and environmental storytelling so i was going to say would the mechanism to deliver that kind of story be like just more cutscenes? yeah i want cutscenes. i want cutscenes from from soft like because we (laughs) i haven't seen that from them ever so it's like other than like when you walk into a boss room and you see the boss like look at you um that's the extent of their cutscenes. so i think with uh george rr consulting them um they could come up with some some good stuff and they i think definitely have the talent to pretty much i don't think they can make a a bad game essentially so um i'm really hyped for that i'm curious to see if it's going to be a next gen only game or if it's going to be ps4 maybe cross platform or something like that i mean i'm just like when um when cyberpunk and um death stranding are coming out on current consoles i have a hard time imagining that this would be but it's like a new one. so we expect the i'm i'm guessing since xbox is coming 2020 we would also expect playstation to come 2020 um so it's just like where in that year does this game fall you know what i mean or does it fall in 2021 or something like that because the fact that we only got a cg trailer kind of tells me that maybe there the gameplay is not even ready yet um right maybe it's really super early on so who knows honestly um but either way, PS5 is backwards compatible, then I have no problem with it coming out on PS4. Um, but yeah, Elden Ring. All right. What you got next? Uh, let's talk about some Dragon Ball. <laughs> Dragon Ball. Because so I'll never stop this. talking about Dragon Ball. Uh, all right, you go first then. You want me to go first? Okay, so yeah. Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. That's what we're talking about, right? Yes, sir. Okay, Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. Is this kind of... Is this weird looking kind of open world taking you through the story of the original dragon ball z from goku's perspective which is to be honest not at all what i was expecting from this so why this reminds me why you gotta say weird though because it, it just seems <laughs> like this reminds me of one of those uh i don't know if you remember these games but the naruto like clash of ninja games on like I was gonna say I, it reminds me Game of Cube. like Broken Bond, and I really enjoy Broken. Yeah, where you like play as the you play as like the main character from the story from the anime, but it's kind of like instead of it's like in between the major story beats, you're kind of doing like these weird side tasks that they made just for the game. Which yeah, because it, it would be like um, it was like when Jiraiya like wanted a 
phone number and she was in yeah it laying in the hot spring and then he would send naruto so in the game you as naruto have to like go over to the girl and then try and impress her for jiraiya yeah. like that was a side mission exactly you had to complete. and that's like video game stuff that you wouldn't see in the show so it's like i'm interested to see like the combat looks pretty cool it looks pretty like tenkaichi xenoverse fighting but out in an open world which is pretty cool i'm curious to see if if you actually ever fight more than one person at a time or if they they have a way to deal with that yeah um i don't know though i i feel like i've seen the this original like dbz story in game even in games so many times i kind of wish they would have told an original (laughs) story with it so okay that's a that was gonna be my other question because uh the reaction that i'm getting is like people are like why 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 can't we move on from this story yeah and i don't i I don't care guys i love it i don't care (laughs) you're with it i was just like let's fight frieza again i don't care yeah did (laughs) did you actually did you see the gameplay demo because they uh, they do also have a gameplay demo for this i think i think i did because i think i saw that uh some intermix with the trailer side quests and whatnot yeah um, oh no i have to check i have to check out more of that because yeah. i just saw more of the uh fighting which again okay it looks cool yeah and fighting that, looks cool. that was kind of how broken bond was was like you would do you would actually actually have to like traverse the map mm-hmm. so like it wasn't just like warping you from place to place so you would traverse the map and then you would get to like kind of a set piece and then you right. would just fight you would fight there and then advance the plot line so right i'm just thinking if it's something like that i wouldn't hate it and um I, I like that it uh, highlights like somebody said it highlights the more mundane side of yeah, Dragon Ball, that's a good which is way to fine for it. me because it's like yeah, if we get some humor out of this, if I get to see because I felt like we didn't get to we haven't gotten to see like we hang out in Dragon Ball Z, but there's a lot of characters that we don't get to revisit. Yeah, um, and it's like what are they doing in between these giant like this battle the battle with Frieza and in between like when the androids come like what are they what do they do in their free time in between that I feel like we're gonna be exploring yeah. a lot of that like I want to play a mission as um what was his name uh the guy it was Zarbon Zarbon uh, remember Zarbon and Dodoria the I G? do yeah like I want to play a mission as Zarbon when like Frieza sends him out after Vegeta and the Dragon Balls or something like that that's good but that I, you brought that up though do you think we're ever no, gonna place anybody else we're besides probably goku? not gonna get that far okay because this is being advertised as the story of go like goku. from goku's perspective yeah it's um, a weird so, title to like to be honest because only kakarot. vegeta calls him kakarot so it's like well, i'm just like it's dragon ball carrot <laughs> dragon ball carrot yeah actually dragon ball z carrot they should have called it they should have called it dragon ball k or something <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I I mean I'm excited. I I I love Dragon Ball and I've got to just learn to like embrace it. Mm-hmm. Um cuz it's like even cuz I wasn't a huge fan of the original Dragon Ball, but I know there's Same. like yeah. huge huge fans of that. So it's like kind of just take it all. Yeah, I'm As long as it's not GT, I don't care. I got my eyes on it. I'm glad it's not just another fighting game cuz we've got so many of those now. Yeah, um, that's what I'm excited about too. But I'm 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 a keep. I don't know if it's a day one for me, but I'm gonna definitely keep my eye on it. Yeah. Um, so let's What's see. Next? What do I have? Oh, can oh. we just throw throw in real quick? Uh, do you think? Uh, so I haven't had any personal experience with the elite controllers, but I've just been hearing that they're garbage. Do you think oh, that they're garbage, gonna really? try and fix those? I yeah, heard they're I, amazing. I've literally heard people say they bought like five of them because the knobs keep popping off. Oh my god, that's crazy. Aren't they magnetic though? And I think our brother had an issue with his. Oh wow. Yeah, see, I so we don't have or you have an Xbox, but I, d- I, I don't have, have an Xbox, an- but I don't have an extra Xbox worth of money to spend on a controller. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I don't have an Xbox, so I'm not too familiar with the Elite controller outside of what just the information about it that is customizable. Um I did not actually know that there were a lot of problems with it, so hopefully So yeah, I'm just throwing that in here for feedback anybody if you have anything to say about elite controllers please yeah write in. i mean we might as well just say they announced elite controller series too um yeah like i said i don't really know too much about it um but hopefully it fixes any problems with the generation one of it um presumably that's why they're doing it 
Um, I do wish PlayStation would actually do a version Please? of this. Please, I know they PlayStation. Have, I know they have. So they have a third party scuff one, and they have like an Astro one that are both customizable. But uh, I don't. And they look pretty cool too. Yeah, they, I I kind of personally also want to wait for PS Five before I invest in something like that. I don't want to really spend two hundred dollars at the end of a generation for a controller. Yeah. Unless they announce that the controllers work on PS Five, then it might be a different story. <laughs> um. But yeah, not too much to say on the Elite controller too. Get hype about it if you if you if you want that, or maybe it's a good thing to get if you never tried out the first one, but you want to jump in and get a second one. Um, but yeah, the next thing I'm hype about is that Borderlands Three. So, tell me about it. That Borderlands Three. So I've I've recently been playing. Uh, well, a little a little while ago, I played through Borderlands Two to beat it because I I didn't actually beat the ps4 version of it um in the handsome jack collection but borderlands 3 it just looks like they're really modernizing it in a way that borderlands 2 i would say at this period in time severely needed like borderlands 2 you can't uh the movement is very limited the, there's not a lot of fast travel options like you really have to kind of backtrack a lot which was can get kind of tiring but the thing about borderlands is the comedy the 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 shooting is really fun the it's one of the few looter shooters maybe the only looter shooter looter Schluter, maybe the only schluter <laughs> that That's dives great. into like the the really cool rpg stuff like you have a full skill tree you can make really customized builds that do crazy stuff combined with like weapons that have crazy perks like um for example borderlands 2 there's like a rocket launcher that you can literally have a build where you just shoot the rockets at your feet and it like fully heals you while also killing everyone around you um, so just stuff like that that you can't do in like destiny or division is really awesome and with borderlands 3 they're adding like each weapon has a alternate fire mode which essentially makes each weapon two weapons in a way or each weapon class i should say two weapons because they have a bunch of different weapon classes um and i'm not sure how familiar you are with borderlands but like they do crazy stuff with the weapons like these weapons on legs like <laughs> weapons that when you reload them they turn into like heat seeking rockets that chase the enemies and it's just nice. like also really awesome stuff that you don't see in other games and i'm I, hoping I just to can't experience wait. that soon because i did pick up the handsome collection yeah you got you gotta play that I, th I think you might if like if you really like first person shooters like really funny comedy and and um that like loot grind of like seeing a yellow gun pop out of somebody and it has crazy <laughs> stats then you'll really like this game because unlike destiny this game actually has a focus on story there's a lot of cutscenes. there's a lot a lot of side quests um it's just overall a really great game and the new the new vault hunters look cool i'm still they showed mose which is like a she hops in like a, a a battle mech is her special ability and you can customize <laughs> it with different like uh weapons um i'm really they have this guy called the Beastmaster. he's like a robot that has like uh random animals from the wild that he controls but they, it's like the one hunter they haven't shown off yet um which is also the one i'm most excited about so yeah borderlands 3 i can't wait for that that's later this year september 13th 2019 nice. i'm gonna begin that day one for sure um maybe my most anticipated uh game where we actually know the release date um definitely most anticipated for 2019 so i'm gonna be on that cool definitely what you got so i just want to give a quick shout out because uh just because we are kind of i guess maybe correct me if i'm wrong peripheral friend peripheral fans of outlast um yes just want to give a quick mention i played the first to, one <laughs> <laughs> quick mention to blair witch the blair witch game that's coming out um that does look it, good it looks really good um the images look horrifying um mm. but i just want to say like just from what i've seen it looks like it's going back into um the days of like amnesia and the more atmosphere atmosphere mm -hmm. car instead of uh the jump scares mm -hmm. um and it definitely the woods gave me like slender man vibes yeah um, whenever you see tall trees and like fog and just darkness oof. that's what i think of 
So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing more of what's going on with that. And they're saying that it's canon to Blair Witch Universe, so I don't know if anyone gets excited about that. But I don't know what that really entails because they didn't build that much in yeah, Blair Witch. I don't but... know what a Blair. I don't know the. I'm not familiar. But if the game's good, then I'll definitely get into it. Yeah. So For just sure. shouting that out there. Um. Did you want to? Did you have anything else to say? I can mention a couple things about Jedi Fallen Order. Nah, I, I mean, we we talked a lot about that last time. They didn't show any new gameplay, really, so if yeah. you, you can say if you want to say something. So, I just had a couple things. I just uh, checked out a couple more videos, um, and they just talked about how, like, the gameplay seems to be smooth and intuitive. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the one thing that I like is that, like, they're, they were talking about the ease of control. So, something that happened in Final Fantasy XV was um, you saw a reduction in, like, button mashing. There was more of, like, it was more about, like, holds and timing. See that um, God of War vibe. That's when I'm really getting God of yeah. War vibe from it. And so this seems to be following that same line of like, okay, so we're gonna give you easy controls, but then like your your power is based on like your ability to use those skills. Yeah. So they're saying like, oh, you can hold you can hold down this button to like deflect uh phaser attacks with your uh lightsaber, but then if you time it correctly, you can like parry things back mm-hmm. um and you get um extra combos by uh timing out things mm-hmm. in your attacks. It's very um, like then, deliberate combat like it, like don't button mash but like wait for your enemy, like watch them, dodge them, block right. them, or, attack them. Or Go ahead and button mash. You can still get through, but you know it's not. Maybe it doesn't look as pretty. So, right. kind of like a style devil may cry. Thing. Like right, right. Not that thing. intense, but. Yeah. Um, and then another thing they just mentioned that uh, enemies will fight each other. So I thought that was interesting. I always like it in a game where you can kind of choose to hold back, and mm-hmm. your enemies will kind of clear each other out, and you can come uh, sweep up the ones that uh, might be left. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they, uh, um, talked about the idea of like, there's, it, it's not so much like Uncharted where you're kind of on tracks. Uh, it's more of like hub style type Metrovania type areas of where you'll be doing okay. some backtracking, okay. um, and areas where you can like hang out and talk to characters and explore things, um, when you're not on a mission. And then the last thing is just that the drawback of, this being owned by disney is that the there's no human dismemberment uh you so there's a <laughs> right. there's a fight where you're fighting a spider and you're like cutting the legs off and stuff but that mm-hmm. does there's no cool like violence against people so with i light saw sabers. i saw there was this one fight i think it was a dude it was kind of like a mini boss it was like a dude with an electric staff and at the end of the fight he does this finishing move where your character does this finishing move where he like slashes him through the stomach with the lightsaber but like mm-hmm. his body doesn't like separate or anything. He just kind of falls to the ground and he has those like burn lines that, that are like typical of Star Wars, but there's like no blood or anything. So it's yeah. kinda it's kinda toned down. It's I'm guessing it's probably gonna be like rated T. Yeah. Um would be my guess. And then just the last thing I'll say, and this is kind of an inside joke, but the main character's name is Cal. Oh wow. I forgot I actually didn't wanna, even notice that. Makes me want to shoot myself. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's, What's next that's for good. you? Um, so let me see. So I will, I, I want to save cyberpunk for last cause that's huge. Um, so I want to talk about this bleeding edge game cause this caught my attention. Um, now this, so, I don't know about, so this is a Ninja theory game and I believe Ninja theory made hellblade and uh, what was the other, they made hellblade and another action game that I'm forgetting. I'm sorry. Um, but they're really good at melee combat is like their thing. And, and Microsoft recently bought them to make first party games for them. So this is like one of the first big major first party games they're, they're announcing. Uh, as okay. Their... No, I do know what this is. Yeah. So this is kind of like, uh, what it looked like to me was like a melee focused overwatch. Yeah. That's um, what I was going to say. It looks like melee overwatch. <laughs> yeah. And I love, so first, first of all, I love melee. I love swords as I don't know if I said that a lot on here, but you know I love swords. Yeah. Um, and I loved Overwatch for a good a period of time when it first came out. It's just I didn't I didn't stick stick around to it. Um, but this looks good. It has that like really unique character aesthetic that Overwatch has, where it, it, it's got this pot really poppy, colorful art style where all the characters look super unique. Like you just know first glance, like this character is this. They do this with these abilities. Um, which is awesome. I think it's 4v4 um, 
which yeah. is probably fine um because they'll design the maps and stuff around that but uh it just looks awesome i only saw a very tiny little bit of gameplay so mm -hmm. i'm still um and again it looks like melee overwatch but i'm i'm really curious to see how this plays out um i'm sad it's that some... it's an xbox exclusive because i don't know when i'm <laughs> gonna get to play it it's got some very unique character designs for sure um but yeah, I want to say that comes out. Okay, no, they don't have a release date for that yet, but um, it'll be on Games Pass for those of y'all that are hyped for that. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for for Bleeding Edge. Stay tuned for that. Um, did you have another? Or I can mm. I have I have a couple more. I would say I, I'm ready for Cyberpunk, but go ahead. Okay, so with I, the ones you have left, I gotta mention I gotta mention Outer Worlds because I love Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas. This is Obsidian. oh yeah, I forgot about Outer Worlds. Yep, uh, this is Obsidian, the company that made New Vegas. Uh, maybe, maybe I would say probably the second best Fallout game. Some people put it first. That's fine too. Um, after I put it after Fallout Three, but it looks like it evokes that spirit and tone of uh fallout new vegas to an extent like it's definitely not as orange because that game was so orange <laughs> it was it, it took place in a uh, uh vegas and then nevada uh, the desert and it's like oh it's like sepia tones and yeah neons. the whole game um but i like that this outer wilds game is or outer worlds game is really colorful um it oh, my biggest hope is that they improved on the shooting because as a lot of people know the shooting in fallout 3 in new vegas is absolutely atrocious um you can't really play that game without vats like without stopping time but hopefully this game has um good enough shooting that you can play it without actually using they have like a slowdown mechanic that's kind of reminiscent of vats which looks pretty cool um, yeah because i was like i don't remember and because i played four so much i'm like i don't remember it being as huge of an issue i mean like yeah i like using vats, no they fixed it in four yeah but, four they yeah, fixed yeah, yeah. the shooting so much um, so. compared to three but yeah hopefully they have uh, interesting dialogue choices that have effects on the story because that's kind of <laughs> what we go to for fallout games that's kind of where fallout 4 fell apart yes yeah so um but yeah this is this one's actually october 2019 so i will i don't know if it's a day one yet i want to see more i might wait for some reviews or something but i'm really i'm gonna be poor excited. in the fall so many games are coming in so this many fall games 2019. in the fall even just october and september like it's ridiculous in november um but next up i'm just skimming this list to see if there's much more um battletoads remake that's pretty cool for battletoads fans psychonauts 2 um i'm not gonna talk about much because i didn't play psychonauts 1 um, yeah i only played a demo the first one i liked it but yeah it's just wacky yeah um and then gears 5 i think is important to mention um they didn't show a lot they showed a trailer um a scene <laughs> trailer and they showed <laughs> <laughs> some horde escape gameplay which is their new twist on horde mode which is like they described it as like instead of waiting around and like fortifying a position and just waiting for waves of enemies to come at you you're instead like you're in the hive which is like the enemy's home territory and you're kind of blitzing through it like clearing a path to the end to the end um so that could be interesting um i didn't play the last gears because like i said i didn't own an xbox one but gears i used to love i loved gears one gears two gears judgment um gears was a really fun i've never played a gears shooter. game gears so you know you remember division right like how that combat and stuff works yeah 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 Yeah, gears is like the game that basically like invented that um and i, I still think they do it's it the, the cover shoot the cover shooting right? yeah like that specific yeah. form of cover shooting um, yeah so yeah that's one to look out for that's september 2019 actually if you own and xbox um so look out for that who knows when i'll ever play that maybe years from now when i <laughs> have a free game pass trial um a lot of other games a lot of other smaller games were announced um but we're not gonna talk about all of those so last up if you can, want us to talk about something you know where to send an email yeah and tell us what you what you guys are interested in too if in case we didn't mention it um, but last up, let's talk about that cyberpunk because I'm super hyped from this. I still don't have a lot of feelings about this because I don't know what we're doing in the game. Oh, so you but didn't see the it gameplay? Looks great. No, I didn't. Oh yeah, you gotta after this look up Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay demo because they have gameplay now that you can that you can see of it. 
okay um it looks really cool like really cool first person shooting um this kind of different futuristic setting that i don't think we've seen too much of before um really colorful pretty like neon uh they showed keanu reeves is in the game now for y'all that are <laughs> keanu reeves fans are you a keanu reeves fan um, right. i mean he's cool he's, he's cool. cool this john wick i guess john wick yeah there you go the Joe. first movie was enough for me was that movie the last samurai <laughs> that he's in is that what that was called Th- that that wasn't him no that wasn't him <laughs> that was oh, Reeves. there was a there was a samurai movie he was in i forget the name of it yes um, sorry keanu reeves fan but uh cyberpunk it's just it's from the witcher devs so i know the rpg mechanics are gonna be l- the best out there um because that's kind of what they do the choices the the way the choices affect the world um i'm pretty sure that's going to be doubled down on from what they learned from witcher so i'm i'm really just hyped to to see a lot of, the, of this i'm gonna spend probably five hours in the character customizer uh, <laughs> when it comes out um, getting your cyberpunk tattoos yeah straight. exactly but uh what are what are what are you most hyped about about cyberpunk um i guess i'm just most hyped to experience this since i have not gotten to play the witcher game yet um you gotta i'm excited (laughs) about being in a world this big um but yeah this one i'm kind of just gonna let it you know wash over me i haven't Mm -hmm. i had i can't really say i had high hopes for it because i don't think i've played a game (laughs) like this before yeah if you played witcher you would have high hopes for this yeah (laughs) for real for real um but yeah, this comes out April sixteenth, twenty twenty. So, um, a little, a little while late to get oh to my this God. one. I'm just looking. I'm like, oh my God, this hot pink hood. I know. <laughs> it's <laughs> so insane. neon. This game is so neon. Yeah. Um, but it looks really cool. I can't wait. Um, do you want to move on to?